Welcome to D-Lab everybody. This weekend I'm recapping a classic Johnson Ranger 1 transmitter. I've already begun the process, but I've got some tech tips to share with you along the way. Here we go. Alright, so here is the original location of C77. Okay, This big guy used to be in there. It is a 10 microfarad cap at 700 volts DC. These obviously fail over the years and need to be replaced. But the issue is the area that you're working in. So the original one was in here with a clamp. He would nuzzle down in there, the ground swung down to this post, and the hot would go over here to R35. Okay, And this is your modulation adjustment resistor. In the Viking 2s, to replace the high voltage cap assembly, I've made this nice little module. It's on a turret board. It's got two 47 microfarad caps and two 470k 1 watt resistors that balance the voltage across these caps. So in this case you'd end up with a little over 20 microfarads at a thousand volts DC. That's the same thing I've done here, but because of the room constraints I had to actually put these two caps in series and the resistors in series on top of them like you see in this diagram. So to build this high voltage capacitor replacement for the Ranger you will need a pair of FNT 22 microfarad caps at 500 volts. You're going to wire them in series so you end up with around 11 microfarads at 1000 volts DC and of course you will need your 470k balancing resistors and they will hook up in the same configuration as that old cap did. All right, You'll see I put a little piece of heat shrink in the center. That's because you have the connection points of the two caps and the resistor is meeting up and that is a little bit flimsy and a little bit fragile. So this is some self-adhesive heat shrink tubing which really stiffens up the assembly and then I simply glue that in place with E6000 clear goop or any adhesive that you can find that will work. Alright, so a quick note, there are some capacitor kits available that I've seen on the web for the Rangers. Um, they come in this type of packaging and they usually have a little white nylon clamp and I believe they want you to put a hole here on the shield and clamp them in place. I'm kind of concerned about the quality of these new cap assemblies, okay? They're kind of a homebrew cardboard tube, they got plastic caps, and they're stuffed with components, and the high voltage cap is actually this size, if not a little bit smaller. What concerns me is, you look at the size of these filter caps to handle 500 volts, now all of a sudden I've got a little guy like this, and it's crammed with two little caps that can also handle a thousand volts. Ah, sorry, in my opinion I wouldn't use them. I'm sure some of you might not like that, but I work on a lot of old vintage amplifiers, as you know, the fenders. I put in top quality caps. I consider the Ranger kind of like a fender amplifier. I'm going to put in the best components that I can find. Alright, so I decided to go ahead and pop the caps off of these so we can see the inner workings couple capacitors tucked in there with flying leads. This one here is the same way, a little bit of silicone to hold things in place. A lot of work went into the construction of these caps, but they still burn up a lot of room and I feel as though the individual caps installed in your Ranger opening up room, making it easier to work on is better for your classic radio. All right, let's go over some of the other areas in the Ranger that you'll find these electrolytic caps that need to be replaced. Here behind the audio control, you're going to find a dual 10 microfarad cap, very large cap, and he'll be tucked way down in there with a metal band. To get him out, I take a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel. I cut the band, get that out, and then remove the hardware after I have access. Now this is only a 50 volt cap guys, but back in the day they had to make them large. Okay, To replace this guy, you can put two individual 10 microfarad caps right on the tube socket. There's plenty of room. 
So these are little 10 microfarad 50 volt caps. Over here on the other side of the interstage transformer you're going to find another big dual cap. This one is a 15 microfarad and it's a positive and negative bias cap. So one section goes to the 12AU7, the other section goes over here to this terminal strip. So you've got to be very cautious that you don't hook them both up with negative chassis. Take a look at your schematic. Once again, this was only a 150 volt cap. So I put in individual 22 microfarad 160 volt caps right down in this area. So removing all these big old electrolytics really open up the area and makes the, the Ranger much easier to work on. This cap right here is a 0.022 microfarad cap. Okay, The original one was this green ugly thing. I highly recommend at a minimum that you change that cap because if it leaks it changes the bias in your modulation section and can fry your modulation transformer. That's a very very bad thing. So we have another electrolytic cap that's mounted underneath of the band select switch shaft that you see here. This was the original, an old 30 microfarad 450 volt cap and they are in there tight guys. When the shaft turns it actually rides on this old cap. They were large back then so what I do is I replace them with a 47 microfarad 500 volt F and T cap. The case style is smaller, she drops right in. As an added precaution, I always put a drop of adhesive underneath of it because I don't want this riding up hitting the shaft and I sure don't want this assembly to contact it when it's doing its job. The only thing I need to emphasize is that when you mount this cap, there's an access hole in front of it. You can't see it in this video, but that access hole is for getting to the set screw of the VFO vernier, okay, so that you can work on the Ranger, pull the face off, so don't cover that hole up. All right, so now let's take a look at the cap that everybody seems to forget about. It's an electrolytic that is underneath of the keyer platform, assuming your Ranger has this option. This was in later models, okay. So the original cap was this big guy. There used to be a standoff here and the commons actually hooked to the standoff and then these leads went to the terminal strip. So this big monster is a dual 15 microfarad cap once again at 150 volts and what they did is they paralleled both the leads so they're actually getting 30 microfarads at 150 volts and it was in a negative bias situation. So what I do is I replace it with this little guy this is a little 33 microfarad at 100 volt cap. If you look at your schematic, you'll see that it doesn't even get close to 100 volts on this negative bias line. So you can tuck this guy in there, remove the standoff. There's a whole bunch of room that you'll gain because this cap actually rides dangerously close to your function switch. Also, while you're in here and everything's removed, guys, it's time to pop that VFO cover and make sure that Mr. Chernobyl is not in there. In this case, he was. And there was complaints of this VFO drifting in frequency. That's the culprit. One other quick thing, as you guys know, the function switch is notorious for failing on the Rangers. So while you have access, put a little bit of lube here on the little clicker and hit the switch contacts with deoxid. Before I put this together, I still got to change this little bumblebee cap, but then we'll be ready to test the Ranger. Okay, it's test time for the Ranger. I'd highly recommend that you look at your manual and preset the controls. They have some charts for that. It makes the tune-up much easier. So pretty much, we're going to go to grid, phone, and peak our grid. Okay. Turn off VFO, the plate, and I'm going to key it, and we're going to dip the plate. When you dip it, you'll see your wattage going with that dip. So if you're off the dip, you'll see your wattage decrease. Okay? It's very important 
that you dip the plate. Get her thing in resonation. She's a little over 40 watts. And the thing that usually changes when you change out those filter caps is your modulation current. And this is critical that you test. After it's fully loaded up to the proper plate milliamps, take your switch to modulation. You should see around 50 mils. Okay. If you don't, you have to adjust the tap on the resistor underneath. Okay, let's see if she modulates. Oh yeah, yeah, she's a talking. All right, for the fun of it, let's take the Ranger and do a live test listening on an NC300. All right, it's live test time using my National 300 receiver with this Ranger that's temporarily hooked into a dummy load. If you guys are going to bench test your Rangers on a receiver, make absolutely sure that you ground the transmitter. Otherwise, you'll hear this buzzing noise and you'll think, man, what did I do to screw up this repair? Just got to ground the case of that Ranger. Okay, so we're going to listen on the NC300. I'm on the 40 meter band. Let's see what she sounds like. Hello, one, two. Hello, one, two. Of course, you always got to get a little bit of that feedback going because I'm real close to my speaker. But she sounds great. Crystal clear. The sound you'd expect from a Ranger. Okay, mission accomplished on the Ranger repair. But now I have another thing I need to show you guys. I got a mystery box in the mail the other day. And inside were some custom bottles of hammered ham wine. My cousin in Georgia made these and sent them up to me. So I will be featuring these in a future Hammered Ham video. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate you thinking of me, man.